Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you all about how I revised for my first year medical school exams because I've had quite a few requests to do this. But quick disclaimer, I am still very much figuring out what works for me and it's definitely trial and error, but I was very happy with my exam results. So I do think some things must be working. So if you're interested in hearing about how I revised for my exams this year, then stay tuned. Before we get into the video, if you're interested in knowing how I take notes throughout the year, this video isn't really gonna focus on that, but I will link the video I made in the description about how I take notes on my iPad at university. Today we are purely focusing on how I revise and mainly that period before exams where you're revising every day and how I kind of planned my revision around that. The first thing I do after I have taken my notes is I have this great big master document. Basically in this document I list all of the learning objectives for every single lecture. We get given the learning objectives normally before the lectures so normally before the lecture even happens I go and I write down all the learning objectives for that lecture so I kind of know A where the lecture is going and B what I'm expected to know and get from that lecture. What I do then is after the lectures happen and after I've taken my notes I go through and underneath each learning objective I write down notes and I summarise. For example if we were doing a genetics lecture and one of the learning objectives was to name some examples of X-linked diseases I might list a couple of examples of X-linked diseases underneath that learning objective. It's pretty self-explanatory basically. One thing I found in my previous degree is that I never really knew what I was expected to take away from the lectures and this really helps me get it clear in my head what the lecturers actually want us to know because at the end of the day they are the ones writing the exam. So basically I build up this document throughout the year and then the aim is by the end of the module I have literally every learning objective written down and loads of information for that learning objective right underneath it. So then I use this learning objective document as the basis of making my flashcards. Now there's so many different ways you can make flashcards. You can do it the old fashioned way with pen and paper. I know some people who make flashcards on good notes. There's some people who use Quizlet. Honestly there's so many but I use Anki and I've been using Anki since pretty much the start of the year. If you don't know what Anki is, you can download it onto your computer for free. The mobile version is paid for and I've not got that one yet, but I know a lot of people who do. But basically Anki is a way to make flashcards on your computer. So what I do is after I've got my learning objectives, into the big document, I then go through the learning objectives and make questions out of those learning objectives and put them into Anki. And then throughout the year, I build up my Anki decks. And when I come to revision, I then start going through my Anki deck. So before this year, I'd never really done active recall or anything like that. And I have definitely found it's improved my grades and improved my performance in exams. So I would definitely recommend trying some kind of active recall. Another great thing about Anki is that you can track how many cars you've done that day. If you download the little heat map add-on to Anki, it's really good at tracking like what you've done. And obviously it tells you how many cars are due that day. I don't necessarily stick to that. I try my best to, but honestly, I've created so many cards that is pretty overwhelming so don't go overboard if you can although I really do think at the start you're probably going to go overboard and make too many cards so don't be too hard on yourself if you do. Another really good tip would be to try and have a go at using someone else's flashcards because it's slightly easier I think to answer your own flashcards but if you go and use someone else's then it's much more difficult because obviously you haven't written them they will have written them in a way that might not totally make sense to you and that might not always be helpful but sometimes it's really good because they might have thought about the topic in a way that you have never thought about it or they may have come up with a question that you would have never thought of asking do you think using someone else's flashcards is a good way to mix it up as well okay so I've got my learning objective list with everything I need to know and I've made all my Anki flashcards and now it is time to actually sit down and revise for my exams. So if I give you a little overview of how I planned to do my revision on this little calendar, I honestly didn't stick to it because sometimes topics take longer than you think to cover and revise and sometimes you just decide to have an afternoon off and that's okay. But this was my plan. So the first sort of couple of weeks would have been just going over flashcards and Anki and identifying weak topics. And then more closer to the exam, I wanted to do past papers and practice questions completely all the time. But yeah, as you can see, the bulk of my revision for my exams was from Anki and using flashcards. And so the month leading up to my exams, I would then wake up every morning and I would do one or two hours of Anki. And then I would identify from that session of Anki 
what my week topics were. And then with those week topics, I would go away and either go through the lecture notes or I would go on YouTube and look up a video on that topic or I'd go on a website like Geeky Medics and start reading up on the topic again. But basically I was going away and finding a way to revise this topic. And it doesn't just have to be the lectures that you've been given. There's so many ways you can revise. And that brings me on to the sponsor of today's video, which is Lecturio. I'm really excited to be partnering with Lecturio because they are one of the websites I use when I'm recapping and when I'm trying to figure out what I need to know about a topic that I've forgotten. Lecturio is basically a bank of lectures and the lectures are given by doctors and other academics from all across the world and you can just go through the website and look at all the different lecture topics they have. It's really good because a lot of the lectures are very short, not usually longer than 30 minutes, some are like 10 minutes long so you can just pick a video, recap the topic quickly and for me this is one of the best ways to target the topics that I'm struggling with. So for example I was really struggling with understanding and interpreting ECG so if I go into the cardiac physiology tab you can see that there's a set of lectures on ECG and they're all kind of bite-sized which means I can pinpoint the part of the topic that I'm really not understanding or if I need to I can watch the entire lecture series but it means you can really target your revision. You can also check the learning objectives to make sure you've clicked on the right video and another really great feature is underneath there's a discussion tab where the lecturers have replied to questions people have so if you have a question it may have already been answered in the comments. The best part is within the lectures there are quizzes so they stop you and quiz you throughout which is good because a it makes sure that you're paying attention because obviously sometimes it's quite easy to sort of get distracted and b it can check your knowledge so it's one thing watching a video but this makes it active and makes it kind of makes you an active participant in the video so the quizzes are a really good feature to have and that's something that i find compared to youtube because when you go on youtube you can kind of just zone out when you're watching a video, but for this, you've got the quizzes there, you know you're actually doing some work and you're active in that. You can also get the Lecturio app on your phone, which is really handy. I quite like it for doing the quizzes on the go because they've got the question banks in there as well. I couldn't recommend Lecturio enough because it is the quickest way for me actually to find a video on a topic I need to learn like that. When you go on YouTube, I find sometimes you're like scrolling for ages trying to find a video. Here you know it's covering everything. And also when it comes to revising, you can track your progress in the quizzes and identify which topics you may be weaker on so overall a really brilliant resource that i couldn't recommend enough i will leave the link below you can get 35 percent off with my code for the three month contract and also the one year and the two month contract thank you again to lecturio for sponsoring this video so after i have been through my week topics and kind of cross them off the list i would then go back to anki and select specifically that topic that I've been not very good at and go through those questions again and hope that my score had improved. So that would be the bulk of my revision throughout the sort of month leading up to the exam. And then within the week or two before the exam, I would start looking at past papers and practice questions. Now, I don't know if it's just my university, but they only gave us one or two practice papers, like full on, full practice papers. And that baffled me because well, wh why can't they just release all the papers to us? And I think there's a lot of repetition with questions basically and they don't want to give us all the potential questions that could be in the exam. So in the week leading up to the exam, I was sort of doing Anki still, but also fitting in either a past paper or practice questions. The uni did kind of provide different self-assessment questions, so I would count those as past paper questions because they were written by the uni. So the last week running up to the exam would literally just be Anki in the morning, past paper style questions in the afternoon, and I would just go on like that and do that throughout the week. The day before my exam, I honestly didn't do that much revision. I don't like to cram the day before my exam. So that has been what has worked for me this year. What I will say is it's okay to try lots of different revision methods. Not everything works for everyone. And just again to say, I probably will change it up next year, but definitely keeping the flashcards and active recall and definitely sticking with Anki because I really enjoyed using it. But yeah, that is everything. If you've got any more questions about how I revise, then please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!